Well, from the news tonight, it seems that picric acid has hit the headlines again. A day after a chemical scare shut the school down, classes have resumed at the Kettering College of Medical Arts. And new tonight, an antique alert. The bomb squad is called out to handle a potentially explosive collector's item. Whoa, sounds like dangerous stuff. This picric acid, we gotta be really careful with that stuff, right? And even those first aid kits, and they found out they had enough explosives to blow this house sky high. It can easily explode, and it explodes significantly. Boy, it's a good thing we got those experts around to take care of that stuff when we find it, right? That picric acid stuff? Good thing we can have somebody get rid of it for us. Online videos show their explosive potential. Hello, my name is Ron Harvey. I'm the owner of Echelon Environmental. I've been in the hazardous waste business now for quite a while. I've worked at three different hazardous waste facilities. I've handled more than 400,000 drums of hazardous waste. I spent a number of years uh, dealing with uh, laboratory chemicals, going into laboratories, getting rid of all the old chemicals that they don't like. And I have seen picric acid up close and personal, as a matter of fact. So really, today, I just want to talk a little bit about it because picric acid has kind of a bad rap, as I see it in the hazardous waste business. Every time some of that stuff shows up, everybody goes into conniptions. So, so really, what are the facts? Uh, picric acid is a compound known as trinitrophenol, or TNP. It is a close relative of a very familiar compound to all of us, I'm sure, TNT, trinitrotoluene. Now, we know that trinitrotoluene is the major component of dynamite. And therefore, picric acid is a similar material. But in the settings that we use it frequently, is it really like handling a stick of dynamite? No, not really. The bottom line with picric acid is that it's not a lightweight. It's something you have to take seriously when you handle it, and you have to take lots of precaution when you're using this material. But it isn't the world ending explosive that a lot of people would make you think it is. For instance, um, Sigma Aldrich is a worldwide major distributor of small laboratory chemicals. They manufacture and distribute everything that you can imagine. Um, to them, they ship out picric acid on a regular basis as a mixture, 65% picric acid, 35% water. It is a solid, bright yellow, typical color for uh, uh, picric acid, bright yellow solid in small bottles, probably 100 grams or less, um, but it is shipped as a flammable solid, not a highly explosive, dangerous, um, evacuate the neighborhood chemical. Um, Sigma Aldrich puts this stuff on the road every day, puts it into a box, puts it on an airplane, 
puts it on the highway, bumpity bump across the roads, and then drops it off at your nearest hospital sometimes or other laboratories. So it isn't something that if you look at it hard, it's going to blow up. It's simply not that dangerous. Um, picric acid has many uses and it's still being used uh, frequently. I meant to look up the quantity of picric acid that is produced every year, but I forgot. Um, so uh, forensic laboratories use it, um, particularly crime laboratories. Um, they use it for, uh, one of the uses is for detecting urine, the presence of urine in uh, clothing samples perhaps. Um, so, so there, forensic labs have picric acid. Um, the uh, pathology laboratory in your uh, local hospital also uses picric acid. They use it as a stain for tissues that they then look at under a microscope and can see what's, uh, what's going on in that tissue. Um, picric acid has many medical uses. It was, at least in times past, uh, used as a treatment for malaria and for herpes, and a 1% solution was also used for burn treatment. Um, other uses of uh, picric acid, um, it was used initially as a fabric dye. It turned wool and uh, silk a really nice shade of yellow. And in fact, the people that worked in the factories that used this dye to make the, the uh, fabrics was uh, uh, were, they were called canaries because they got so much of this stuff on them back then, you know, they didn't really, health and safety issues, personal protective uh, measures were not really much of a concern. Um, and these guys would turn yellow and they would call them canaries. So how dangerous is that? We're talking a solution. They would dip the, um, the fabrics into a picric acid solution, pull them back out, let them dry, and then people wore them. Hmm, not quite as dangerous as we thought, perhaps. Um, and of course, we all know that picric acid um, is used as an explosive. It wasn't actually used, it was discovered in 1771, picric acid, the compound itself. Um, then they started using it to make dyes and there were other the medical uses. Um, it wasn't first used as an explosive until more than 100 years after its discovery. So in that previous hundred years, people were using it all the time for everything. Well, not quite. And um, nobody blew up. Hmm. But still, uh, where's, where's the explosiveness of this material if for a hundred years it was used routinely in all sorts of industries and um, no explosions? All right. Handling picric acid. How do you deal with this stuff? Well, uh, Mark Cameron, in his publication, uh, Picric Acid Hazards, uh, made some very interesting statements. Uh, he is the senior uh, industrial, uh, certified industrial hygienist for the uh, California Department of Justice for 14 years. And this is what he had to say about picric acid. Have there been any explosions in laboratories? There are no documented instances of spontaneous detonation of picric acid in laboratories. Mr. Cameron goes on to say that in the wetted state, it is unlikely to be an explosive hazard. If a bomb squad tries to blow it up, the picric, the picric acid will not detonate and will just spread picric all over the place. So interesting that Mr. Cameron uh, doesn't really seem to think that uh, wetted picric acid is as dangerous as the nightly news would have you believe. So, um, on top of that, I found quite a few other uh, statements of the hazards of picric acid. The University of Wisconsin has a document called Safe Handling of Picric Acid because they use that kind of material in laboratories all the time. And they, they say that picric acid can be handled safely when it is wet. So dry picric acid, that can be a problem. Wet picric acid can be handled safely. The University of Wisconsin goes on to say in their uh, document, 
for spill cleanup procedures. If you spill some picric acid powder, you moisten it with a spray of water, and then you sweep it up because at that point it is safe to handle. Stanford University, in its document, Information on Picric Acid, says when hydrated, which means wetted with water, it is typically harmless. It will not explode like a lot of people think it will. So, let's do the acid test here and actually see if we can make some picric acid explode. I've got a few videos here that show you the, um, the explosive nature <laughs> of picric acid. Now here we have a gentleman that is actually going to set some picric acid. Well, after three tries, the stuff actually catches fire and it starts to burn a little bit. It actually does, after a few moments, start to catch on pretty good and then it burns. Oops, it broke the piece of glass. Well, not much of an explosion there, I see. There's another one, another small amount of picric acid held over an open flame. And you can see it takes several seconds for the material to even catch fire and uh, go poof. You might notice also that that person wasn't wearing any gloves and his fingers were yellow. He must have been playing with the stuff. Here's another test, a little bit larger quantity of picric acid under a Bunsen burner, pretty intense heat, and it sparkled pretty good, but it did not explode and destroy the laboratory, please note. Okay, and here's picric acid again, and you can see he puts a nice intense flame from a Bunsen burner on there. And, well, it sort of starts to catch fire. Oh, look, there it goes. It burns pretty nicely once it's torched significantly. But compare that to a real explosive. When you get it close to the flame, woof, poof, where'd it go? Wow, now that stuff is an explosive. Poof, it's gone. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say that if you find some picric acid in a laboratory, don't panic. You leave the stuff alone, you call your health and safety people, you get them involved, hopefully they will not panic as well. Because picric acid, you say picric acid to people and they, well, they kind of get real excited. So, don't panic. If you see an old container, don't touch it. You're gonna to need to call somebody to come in and take a look, and they'll get it straightened out, one way or another. So, picric acid, it's okay. It's okay. Um, again, this is Ron Harvey with echelon environmental chemicals are fun but you have to treat them with a lot of respect that's the way I do it that's why I still have all my fingers and toes and eyes and all that other stuff all right thank you very much if you have any questions reach out and get in touch with me there's my phone number my email address be glad to talk to you about it thank you very much have a nice day. Don't panic.